I want to preface this conversation and be very clear that I am work in progress just like everyone. I believe that if we all had this whole thing called life figured out, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. Life is an evolutionary process, and all we can do is pray that each week, each month, each year, we become more refined, we become more intelligent. Brian Stevenson is the executive director of the Equal Justice Initiative. And I was deeply motivated and inspired when listening to his lecture. I'm going to most definitely post the link below, I promise. In this lecture, he says the opposite of poverty is not wealth. The opposite of poverty is injustice. I laid awake in bed pondering and analyzing that statement. We have witnessed so many incidents of wealthy criminals getting away literally with murder and poor people getting sent to prison, sentenced merely because of a lack of funds and their inability to afford a good lawyer. Or often that the judge happened to be cool with the opposing attorney. There's no doubt that the criminal justice system has been infiltrated by extreme corruption. And one may say to me, well, you have a lot of work to do on yourself, you know? You should worry about yourself. Why fight for people? And to some extent, I agree. And I can see where you're coming from and I can see why you would ask that question. But I have to pose the question, what if each one of us has a divine assignment assigned to us by the Almighty? Now, the Almighty didn't say that you can only do this job if you have a certain amount of money in your bank account or if you have a team of allies. I began to think deeply about this notion of this assignment from the Almighty. And I'm not a fearful person. I don't buy into fear consciousness, but I started to develop this this deep fear and anxiety of the repercussions of what it would mean to me to let down the Almighty when he gave me so much. And he made me so equipped and gave me the tools to step up to my power. The sadness of just the thought of it nearly brought me to tears. How much of a letdown and in a disappointment it would be to not step up to my assignment from my creator after giving me so much. And so I have to be balanced in my discussion of this issue. Because it baffles me as also an observer of society, humanity, how these people have six figures, seven figures, and they're adults and they have the free time to do absolutely nothing. I mean, spending their days gossiping and focused on nothingness. How do you earn a living and how do you maintain it with that mind? Like I've met so many wealthy drug addicts, wealthy people who spend their lives on meaningless things. In my opinion, they don't deserve their money. Cause look at what you do with your time. Look at what you do with your life. Look at what you become. Look at what you focus on. Look at what you talk about. Certainly the money that you have illegally obtained or obtained in a way that obviously didn't require any level of intellectualism, like it truly baffles me on how you still have it with your physical and intellectual laziness. 
we're not getting the full story. And I don't wanna make a blanket statement and say that every single wealthy person is corrupt because I've addressed this, that's absolutely a fallacy. But certainly, there are a lot of them. And Brian Stevenson, he is um, an incredible, incredible lecturer, uh, attorney, and he has become the executive of an organization. I'll post the link below, um, and it, it'll tell you, you can look him up about you know, his bio, but his, his lecture was heartbreaking. And if you have an inkling of compassion, you will be deeply disturbed by his explanation of what he has witnessed as a criminal justice attorney. The level of injustice is, is indescribable. He talks about a 14 year old boy in this one story who day in and day out watched his mother be abused by his stepfather. And one day in a drunken rage, the stepfather knocks this, bo this boy's mother down so hard with a punch to her head that she lays on the kitchen floor unconscious. And the boy walks in and he sees his mother laying on the floor unresponsive. And he assumes that she's died. He assumes that his stepdad has killed her. And in his anguish and in his rage, he finds a gun in the house and he shoots his stepdad in the head. And the 14 year old boy was tried as an adult because the stepdad happened to be a deputy sheriff. And Stevenson described his feeling listening to this 14 year old boy weep, weep. Not only was this boy dealing with the mourning mm, of his mother, but he had been tried as an adult. Every night, this little boy was being gang raped, locked in a penitentiary with grown men, repeatedly, and the boy would just weep weep. So Stevenson told him he would do the best that he could do to get him out of there. And he filed a motion for the judge to reconsider. But he was told that the time period had passed and that the specific allotment for the time to file that date had come and gone. And there are countless stories like this about these constant fails within our criminal justice system. It's blatant that our criminal justice system has failed America. And there is nothing just about rich criminals getting off and poor people doing time. In this lecture, Brian Stevenson literally makes the argument that slavery has really only transitioned. And then please watch this. I'm gonna post the link below. I encourage you, take an hour out of your day and, and really watch this. I mean, we're talking centuries of deep trauma and it's still occurring. These people are deeply committed to perpetuating this injustice in hopes to create black genocide. Black genocide as in death. Black genocide as in mental death. The death of your mind. They are executing a mass gaslighting in their silent war. And then laughing at the symptoms of your psychosis that they imposed. There is no doubt that a law has severe punishment for this level of evil. But they don't believe in a lie, they're not believers. How could they? With the things that they do, absent of a conscience, they are hellbound 
but some don't even believe in hell. To the naked eye, one may begin to lose their hope in justice. How can these people get away with this? How can these people get away with this? And the things that they do to children and the things that they do on an international, on a global level. And the poverty that people don't even have clean water to drink. Kids' ribs are touching. How, how, how can they get away with this? And they laugh and make a mockery. Out of the trauma that you display when they were the ones who planned the whole thing the whole time. Oh, this level of immorality. There's no words for this. But I'm here to inform you they get away with nothing. Trust me. You would be naive to believe that justice is not being served. Trust me. You've been trained to think that wealth is winning. And for some it is. For some, that's the very tool used to orchestrate their demise. They're driving themselves deeper into their own anxiety, depression, emptiness, low self-esteem. They can't even look at themselves in the mirror because of their moral and spiritual filth. They're killing themselves with drugs and alcohol, pills to sleep, pills for their paranoia, pills for their anxiety, pills for their depression. They're in loveless relationships. They hate themselves. They don't even want to live their own lives. They're suicidal. They literally don't want to be who they are. That's why they're obsessed with us. They want to live through you vicariously. Don't think just because they have material things that they're happy. They're being punished and they're feeling the wrath of the Almighty as we speak in real time. They live in perpetual fear of people discovering who they really are and how they really have obtained their money and the things required of them to maintain it. If you knew the depths of their psychosis, you would never want to live their life. Now balance, I have to be balanced in this discussion. Because I talked about Ben Carson And I thought that his comments were ridiculous. Not just insensitive, but really just, it seemed socially uninformed. I, I don't understand how you can, with a level head, look at the statistics of mass incarceration and not see that there's a problem. Like you are contributing to a collective gaslighting by telling people that there's not an obvious racial issue in this country. Like you've been privileged, I guess, by some standards that you've maintained a level of power and wealth that you can kind of be secluded and not in the trenches among the people. But yeah, Mr. Carson, with all due respect, there's some issues in this country, some legitimate issues People aren't collectively out of their minds in imagining some sort of race problem. 
there are people that don't sleep to execute our demise. This was planned. This was orchestrated. This is not a coincidence that a bunch of people feel this way, Mr. Carson. However, I do have to be balanced in this discussion of injustice and the criminal justice system. You must ask yourself, have you been unjust to yourself? Have you been unfair to yourself? Now, the only way that I can see some sense in what Mr. Carson is doing is the idea of it's likely that you're not gonna change people who are X amount of centuries committed to extreme immoral behavior. Likely it's not gonna happen. It ha didn't happen in our ancestors' lifetime. It's likely not gonna happen in our lifetime. He spoke on the fact that it's not all Caucasians, or we can take it another step, all men who are our oppressors. There are poor white people being taken advantage of by this system as well, lots. Probably the majority. But do they have a stake in this culture of white identity extremism? Yeah, they do, to some degree. Now, if you're gonna be like a Tim Wise, and you're just gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna fight for the people regardless of me being able to get, you know, socialist, you know, perks and advantages from being Jewish or being a male or being, you know, white, things like that. That's a diff that's a whole different ball game. And I want to quote Tim Wise who said that the mess that is in America, we can talk all day about who created it, but collectively as its residents, it's our job to clean it up. He used the analogy of living in a house, you know, somewhere around college or right out of college and somebody had made some sort of gumbo and the gumbo sat on the stove for quite some time. It began to stink up the house. And he said, well, I didn't make that gumbo, but every day it was growing mold on it. And he was living with the stink of it. He was living with the, the fact that there was some old rotten food on the stove. And so he had to roll up his sleeves and clean it up because he didn't want to live with it. And that's our collective obligation when we talk about racism in America. So again, I have to be balanced. Ben Carson doesn't see it as empowering to constantly tap into a victim consciousness. He believes that the media is playing us so we can tap into this uh, collective stream of victim consciousness. And he doesn't believe that that serves us. He doesn't believe that that perpetuates our rise. So that's the only point that I'll give him. Because to some degree I agree with him, but I don't think it's fair to deny that there are things that are actually occurring, that there's extreme injustice that's actually occurring. That's not the solution either. Back to balance, your desire for freedom has to be stronger than your desire for your captivity. I repeat, your desire for your freedom has to be stronger than their desire for your captivity. Your desire for your freedom has to be stronger than their desire for your captivity. Bob Marley said, release yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. It is foolish to wait for your historical and committed oppressor to give you freedom. Not only do they enjoy your pain like sadists, they are invested in it and they invented it. Why? Because there is justice after injustice. There is ease after suffering. There is rulership after oppression. There is wealth after poverty. I repeat, there is wealth after poverty. But the opposite of your wealth, poverty, is your injustice to yourself. 
Are you stepping up to who the Almighty has you here to be? Because certainly our Creator can give us anything, including wealth, but will you use it to serve His kingdom? Will you use it to build His kingdom? You have taken the ideals of people who are so miserable and expect joy to come of that. I keep hearing about hypocrisy. Of course there's hypocrisy. Imagine had it been us who stormed these federal buildings. Imagine had it been black and brown people. Imagine had it been Black Lives Matter who stormed these federal buildings. Imagine. It's like our leaders are now just pointing out hypocrisies. That's what our leadership has become. Of course there's hypocrisy. Of course. What have you been living under a rock? for your whole life and ancestors life and ancestors ancestors life of course there's double standards that is common knowledge it's obvious it's blatant they don't hold themselves to the same standards that they hold they don't hold the, us to the same standards that they hold themselves to obviously why because they feel inferior to us why else why else would you hold somebody to higher standards than you hold yourself to i mean let's think about this logically not because you think you're better than them, but because you think that you're less than them. Think about it. You're watching LeBron James. You're like, whoa. Like, you know deep down you don't have his athletic ability. That's why you're like, whoa, I could never do what he does, right? And then you may be a LeBron hater talking about he ain't all that da 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 da. Bro, can you can you shoot a, a jump shot? Can you dunk? Can you do any of those things? So why do you hold him to a higher standard than you hold yourself to? Because you realize that he is a giant. He is a superior athlete. He is amazing. His athletic ability is indescribable. You know you don't have that ability. That's why you hold him to a higher standard. So when we bend over backwards to point out the hypocrisy, do we think, hmm, why do they hold us to a higher standard than they hold themselves? Why do they expect more from us than they expect from themselves? That's not an inferiority complex. I mean superiority complex, it's an inferiority complex. Put your thinking cap on, not your hair hat, but your thinking cap. Because people perish from a lack of knowledge. And I didn't know will not be sufficient when you are met with your divine judgment. Dumbness is a choice. Now I don't speak for Allah. I'm certain there will be consideration taken for your adversary's deep commitment to your oppression. However, if you're the chosen one, don't you think you will be held to higher standards? If I give you tools to reign and you don't use those tools and you get dominated, whose fault is that? You are cheating yourself out of your divine reward. You are cheating yourself out of your inheritance. You are being unfair to yourself by settling for a life that your creator did not put you here to live. You have failed your assignment from Allah. You are replicating death and emptiness. You aren't living to your divine potential. And for that, you are cheating yourself out of wealth. No one can take from you what you divinely have inherited. No one can take from you what is divinely yours. Please understand that. You are assigned to inherit the gems of wealth from this world and the hereafter. Oh, if you could see the life that your creator wants for you, it's bigger than your wildest dream. But you're operating in an immoral manner and you have cheated yourself out. And now you're bound to poverty and injustice. This is our punishment. I don't think people can see this. This injustice as the chosen people. Why? Why are we locked in cages? Why out of one in three black men, why are they being incarcerated? 
this is the imp the oppression and injustice is is immense i mean it's so it is the contemporary black holocaust it's so wicked what these people do why would allah allow this because we have taken on the values of our oppressor and so allow, allowed the wicked to rule over us. And I'm here to say not all of us. Now this isn't easy. I just lost my father and it's been a hard time for me. It's been one of the hardest times of my life. I had to endure that pain of the loss of the man that I loved beyond words alone and I had to heal from that. In addition to so many things, if I could ask you to be a fly on the wall to my life, if I could ask you to be invisible and take every step with me that I've taken, your opinion would probably be very different. I've been through a lot. A lot. A whole lot. And mourning my father has been tough, but I knew drinking or smoking or having loveless sex was not the solution. I knew that the coping mechanisms that the people who hate me wanted me to gravitate towards would only rob me of the divine outcome that my creator had in store for me to receive. And just the idea that if I can do the right thing, despite how tough it is, despite how tough it is sometimes to be alone, aloneness, and the strength that is required to deal with this battleground that we call life, if I can step up, that the outcome, that the reward was gonna be so Worth it. Your healing and your self-love is the last thing that they want. They will do anything to get in the way of that. Because the minute that you begin to recognize who you really are and love yourself is the minute divine doors begin to open. And these are the doors that you want to open. I'm telling you, these are the doors that you want to open. Not all opportunities are good opportunities. Not all money is good money, I'm telling you. But these are the opportunities that you want. These are the doors that you want. Imagine wealth with no bondage. Imagine love with no pain. Imagine endless joy. That's what your creator wants for you. Peace, serenity, tranquility, calmness, self-confidence, strength, courage, bravery, all of these good things that contribute to your self-esteem. This is what the creator wants for you. But the question is, do you want this for yourself?